want to welcome everybody back to our Thursday night service here at Hegwish. And what a world we're living in. You know, it, 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 this is just the birth pangs. You know, we're just, you know, m maybe maybe a couple of these little demon imps uh, have been birthed. But for the most part, you know, the real bad hasn't been birthed yet. And this is a great time for us to do what we can to listen and then obey uh, the spirit of the Lord, the things that the Lord is talking to us about. Because as everybody knows, you know, since I came on as Pastor Hegwish, um, I've let the church know that my job was to basically get out of the way of the Holy Spirit so that he could teach all of us the things that he wants uh, and how he was going to teach us all. He was going to minister to us differently. It's going to be the same truth from God's word, but each one of us, as we roll differently, some are up and outer, some are down and outers, some fly sideways, you know, some don't mind being inside out. Uh, I prefer to be uh, right side in, but, you know, some people are, you know, inside out and and we're all made in the image of God. And that's why I mentioned the other day about why I liked, uh, I went back to school and did a little study on, on temperaments. I don't care what people call them. They can call them blue, color blue, color red, I, you know, it doesn't matter. But temperaments and the, um, the therapy theory uh, of, of temperaments will only work if you're a Christian. So it's not like it's a psychological mumbo jumbo or babble to try and convince somebody that there's something that they're not. Um, the study of temperaments shows us what the word of God shows about us, our, our, our pros and our cons, and how the word of God in the different temperaments that we have, you know, some people go a little slow. Some people are real fast. Some people, you know, methodically, they're melancholy. Uh, they're melancholic in, in heart or or mind, and some people are what they call uh, caloric. You know, they're, they're just you know, and that can be good or bad. But the Word of God shows us how we can avoid a lot of these pitfalls uh, that Satan puts before us, or that he takes advantage of the weaknesses in our lives. And, and it's just Bible. I mean, it, it's it's just the teachings uh, of Bible. So. We're going to be back over in Hebrews chapter 12 in just a minute. In fact, if you want to go ahead and turn there. But I want to pick up a verse, the last verse of John chapter 21, the last chapter of John's gospel and the last verse, because it's it's a no-brainer today for, for anybody. I mean, you don't even have to have two eyes that can see. You can have one eye with heavy cataracts uh, to not see that things are upside down. And there's a lot of things going on that the devil is trying to draw us into. Uh, you might remember over in Luke 22 when Jesus very personally uh, came to Peter or how they met. And Jesus said, Simon, Simon. He says, Satan has desired to have you to sift you as wheat. Uh, if you look it up, if you do a little research on that, is that Satan was trying to trying to claim him back for his own um, and then wipe him out to sift him as wheat. But Jesus said, um, but don't worry about it, Simon. He says, I I'm going to pray that your faith doesn't fail. So thank God for Jesus Christ, because what he does for Peter, he does for us. And, and it's guaranteed in the first national of heaven that if Jesus, he is now sitting at the right hand of the Father, every single prayer that Jesus prays for us, God is going to answer. Now, we may or may not always like the way God answers Jesus' prayer, but the Lord's going to fix us because we belong to him. So we see politics upside down and the latest bombshell that's out there. And, you know, there's, there's a lot of conservative Christians that are sitting there salivating going, yeah, let's get them back and let's do this. And, and you know, in my flesh, it's really easy for me to get drawn into some of this stuff. But in my spirit, it warns me to stay away and to continue to do what I can 
to pray for God's kingdom to come, for his will to be done here on earth as it is uh, in heaven, and to draw nigh unto him so that he can draw nigh unto me. He can't draw, draw nigh unto me if I'm wrapped up in a lot of carnal things and a lot of carnal thoughts. You know, he has to go around those things in my life and your life uh, with that carnality that, that we allow in our lives. And so we have this book, and I know most of you don't have, in fact, I don't know if anybody has their video on, so I don't know why we're doing Zoom, you know, maybe we got to do two tin cans and a string, but, you know, if you have your video on, or just look down at your Bible, some of you may have it on your phones, cheaters, that's not going to work, but the Bible's a very narrow book, uh, you know, considering some of the books that are written on earth, uh, this book is very narrow, and God has given us enough in his word to feed us to lead us to guide us into the into the ways that he wants us to be in into what to do with these feelings and thoughts that we have and how we're to commit our souls to commit the way we think the way we feel the way we act the way we react towards different things that are going on and just like you you know i don't like what's going on with covid I don't like what's going on with politics. You know, I don't like what's going on uh, in, in the religious, different religious movements uh, that are out there. And my, my, you know, my hackles, you know, get red, as they say, you know, um, my hair, you don't think I have any, but, you know, the hairs on my chin, you know, they stand up straight or, or, or wherever, because, you know, I'd like to see things differently. And what Satan is doing out there now, Okay, because, you know, if it's true, this bombshell that, that came public, a lot of people have known about it. But if, if it's true and, and it can be proved to be true, hold on. Okay, because just to reiterate, Satan is doing everything he can, brothers and sisters, to hurt you, to kill you. He doesn't want you to die quickly. He wants you to suffer. He wants your children to suffer. He wants he wants to steal one by one all those blessings of 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 uh, love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, faith, goodness, temperance, and meekness. He wants to steal that out of your lives. He's already done that with a lot of Christians. He he's replaced the fruit of the spirit uh, with this type of humanistic morality. With and and you know it's good to have morals. You know. But they don't get they won't get you to heaven. They may teach you on earth, you know, how to say yes, ma'am, and no, ma'am. Uh, but that's about as far as you ever go. Men may, uh, you know, mankind may or may not like you, uh, but it won't mean hill of beans to the Lord because no flesh is going to glorify itself in God's sight, and God's not going to bless what's not His. Uh, he, so it's important that we do what we can to follow what the words in this very narrow book are telling us. And so the devil's out there <clears throat> trying to destroy our faith, okay? Uh, and again, I'm just going to, I'm not getting down on anybody, but everybody is just so over demonically driven by the fear of COVID. And, and do you know that, that three times as many people have died with heart disease last year than have died of COVID, three times as many. We don't hear anything about that. I mean, if you listen to, to the media, nobody's died of heart disease. Nobody's died of cancer. Nobody's died of, of, uh, of anything. Nobody's died of anything but COVID. Everybody's dying of COVID. No, nobody else is dying of anything else. I mean, the statistics that are out there, and, and yeah, I mean, I've got them here. I, I could read them, but that's not part of this message. Uh, abortions have, have have murdered twice as many children than COVID has ever killed in our country. So you know where, where's the you know where's the cry out of that? We're in so much fear. God has not given us the spirit of fear. First Timothy one seven. He's given us power, love, and sound mind. And because again, as I mentioned earlier, you know when it comes to this stupid, ridiculous COVID thing, which is serious. Okay, which is real. Okay, don't think I'm making light of it. I respect it. I don't reverence it. I don't fear it. You know, 
And if it is going to hit me, okay, come on. Come on, let, 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 let's get it over with. I'm going to exercise my faith. I'm going to let those that love me know so they can pray for me. I'm going to do as be as wise as I can so I don't pass it on to anybody else, even though, hey, listen, we got we got three methods here to deal with COVID right now, okay? We have God, okay, the sovereignty of God. We have a vaccination that's coming, and Pfizer and the other companies already admitted that the one neat thing about this virus, they just admitted it yet, either yesterday or today, I was reading, uh, they're just about ready to bring it out, is that nanotechnology that's inside of it, where, where it goes in and it then teaches the DNA of different things in the body and that have to deal with this virus, how to deal with it. That's a scary thing. Okay, if you, yeah, it, it's fascinating. I don't understand any of it, but it's fascinating uh, on what they can do with, you know, growing tissue and how change, changing thing, how, how it, I mean, it's almost like they're playing God because they are. And, and thank God for a, lot of, for a lot of the medicine that we have. And, and, you know, I mean, what a fine line we have to deal with here for us. I just want to encourage everybody, don't be afraid of this thing already. Doggone it. You know, not, over 99.5% of people that get it don't die from it. People die of so many, many other things. But it is, I mean, one person, as they say, it's bad enough. But the devil's trying to spin us. Okay, and the political thing, if this political thing is true, that, that they've just revealed, and if it can be proven in courts, the country's going to, you talk about a rip that we've never seen before. Civil war is coming, brothers and sisters. Khrushchev told us all the way back in the early 60s, he said, he said we, don't, we don't have to uh, take the United States from without, we'll take it from within. It, it will fall as an as a overripe fruit into our hands, Khrushchev said. And that's because they've got their Marxist people everywhere. They've got them in politics. You know, they've got them in science. They've got them in all these places that are telling us things that are lies, that are telling us things that are half-truths. A half-truth is a whole lie. Uh, that are telling us things that are contrary to the word of God. They've got these professors in school. You send your children to, uh, to college to hopefully teach them something so they can move ahead in life and they, they come home atheist, they, they come home agnostic, they come home hating God, they come home, you, you didn't teach them to be so rebellious, yet they come home, you know, telling you what to do and what not to do. And, and it's just it's just crazy out there. And everybody knows this. You know, everybody knows the whole world, you know, is upside down. And the devil is doing this and he's got so much access to politics and Hollywood. I mean, let's not even, let's not even get started there. Okay, let's not even go down Hollywood, but and banking, money, huh, you know, listen, the love of money, not money, but the love of money is the root of all evil. Okay, and, and you know, as they say, follow the money, and, and you'll so you'll see it in politics, you'll see you'll see it in um, uh, in um, Hollywood, you'll see it in the social things, you know, you know these social things, Twitter and and, fa and Facebook and your face and everybody else's face and. And uh, and Twinkie or Twitter, whatever it's called, uh, I'm I don't uh, I'm not involved in those things, uh, but you know, people think that well, I advertise on there, you know, because it helps me sell my product, and, and that's good. Now, uh, I don't think WRW is not on Twitter, and it's not on we we don't advertise it. We I think we're on uh, Amazon, uh, but other than that, <clears throat> we're we're not anywhere because the Lord can do all that for us, and you know whatever He wants to do. You know, but a lot of people they advertise on these places, and, and but what we don't realize is that these sites were set up by the devil, because you know who they're advertising, you, you, you know who what their product is. Their product isn't what you're selling. Their product is you, and they're selling you of how you think, how you feel, how you act, and how you react because you've profiled yourself by telling the world that you think this, that, and the other thing. Uh, what Proverbs 21, is it 21? Proverbs something that only a fool speaks his mind. See, the devil, you know, people just out there with, with megaphones, vomiting, vomiting. Look at me, look at me. Because we think we're cool or something, you know? We all think we're a lot cooler than what we really are. 
Uh, and the devil, the, the, these demons out there, they have us profiling ourselves. And these organizations, these social, th they sell that information to people who are trying to capture the way you think, the way you feel, the way you act, the way you react. And, and, and you're defenseless. We are defenseless unless we line up with what the word of God says. So you think, when is he ever going to get to the Bible? John chapter 21. Uh, verse 25, last verse, of the last chapter of John. And there, also, and there are also many other things which Jesus did. <sighs> really? Wow. Because he sure did do a lot in the Bible, didn't he? I mean, the gamut, miracles and raising the dead and creating things out of nothing and doing things that, that no man could ever do. And good, 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 good. And there are also many, 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 many other things which Jesus did, the which, that if they should be written, every one of them, John says, I bet you that the world itself could not contain the books that are written. All the libraries in the world could not contain the books that are written about the things that Jesus did in three years. Well, we have the three years in, in the Gospels, but we know there's a lot more there. So we can exercise our faith. We can trust the Lord. If, if I mean, here we've got this narrow book, but if all the books that were written, if, if the world couldn't contain, if the libraries of the world couldn't contain all the things that Jesus did, that were written that you know if they were if all the things that were written down because what he did what well, wasn't just for today okay it fixed yesterday because we can't fix yesterday we can pray about it but jesus fixed yesterday he fixed tomorrow okay we're not even supposed to be concerned about tomorrow because tomorrow will take care of itself and it will take care of itself if we wake up trusting saying okay lord whew, sure is dark out there sure is a scary thing but you told me not to fear. You, you told me not to buy into things. You told me to not, the cursed is the man that trusts in man and, may, and makes his arm flesh, may, makes that, that man has, has the answers to things because man doesn't have the answer to anything because man is so full with demons and, and demonic thoughts. You know, so I mean, even Christians, I, I'm talking about the unsaved, but let's, let's go ahead and bring in Christians. You know, I mean, again, look, look, at, look at War on the Saints teaching us about, how diabolical, you know, Satan works inside of believers to get us to think, feel, act, and react certain ways. We're, 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 like, we're like puppets. We're like marionette puppets. It's like we're on strings because we are. Okay, we're bound up in these strings because the same doctrine of us binding and loosing is the same, is the same teaching, the same truth that Satan uses against us. And I taught on that not too long ago. I don't want to get into that for this message. But binding and loosing is so is so so powerful, and the devil knows that. So he binds us also, and he's got so many Christians, and and you know, up on this stage that's before us, life that is before us, we're looking, and you and I, we see this, 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 and because you're not political, you only see so much with the politics, and then the next person, which is political, you see a lot more of the politics. And then, but those of you that are more more social, you know, and and more more, uh, you care more about animals or th things in nature. Oh, you know, your focus. And we've got all these stages. Well, we've got one stage, but we've got all these plays. Well, here we are. We're just marionettes, okay? And we're just moving with this music. We're moving with this teaching. We're moving with this thought. We're moving with this feeling. We're doing all these things. And all of us are sitting in this audience, just looking, seeing a world that the devil has set up for us. But as we start aligning ourselves with the truth of God's word, we start to see the facade that's behind that. We start to see the hypocrisy that's behind those things. The stench of hypocrisy today is just so phenomenal. You say, well, what? Are you saying you can't be hypocritical? I've told you. 
first thing I, I the first thing I can remember, I told the Lord, I said, Lord, I don't ever want to be a hypocrite. And Lord showed me I can be the biggest hypocrite in the world. I admit it. But at least I know it. And I don't like it. And I do try and deal with it. So all these things that Jesus did, well, you know, let's just magnify that to the eon, in the, to the eonth degree, you know, uh, of, of how much more that he did that we know of. So let's go back into Hebrews chapter 12. Now remember, we left off, uh, we were kind of all over the place. Uh, but, you know, in verse 3 of chapter 12 of the book of Hebrews, remember the book of Hebrews is written to the Hebrews to tell the Hebrews to stop being Hebrews. It's time to be something else. Okay? So the writer of Hebrews says, now consider him. Let's think about Jesus, who endured such contradiction of sinners against himself. Lest, if we don't do that, we become wary and faint in our minds, because that's what the devil's after. He's after the way we think, the way we feel, the way we act, the way we react. And similarly, you know, when you talk about the mind and the heart, spiritually speaking, there's not a lot of difference there. Uh, you know, they have different functions, but they're synonymous in many ways, because out of, out of our heart come the issues of our life. And the devil knows that. And the devil knows that if you're all warm and fuzzy towards this and that, and I want to see more people that, you know, I don't like when people are, are treated like this. Listen, man's inhumanity to man is so far beyond what we can even begin to understand. And, and we get so offended over, over the minute things that we know when, when what Boko Haram has done in, in Africa you know, what uh, What all these other movements, you know, have done in the Middle East and, and just wiping people out, wiping families. I mean, never, their name to never be mentioned again, you know, and, and how mankind can turn on mankind, kind of like Christians, you know, that's all for another message. So we need to think about Jesus who, who endured such contradiction of sinners against himself because we've not yet resisted under blood. We complain about it. Oh, we complain about the politicians. We complain about the social stuff that's out there. We complain about the marketers that are lying to us. You know, we complain about the churches that, that are just, you know, these preachers that are saying, we complain, 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 whine, whine. Want some cheese with that too? But we've not yet resisted under blood, under the shedding of our blood, sin. Oh, kind of warm here tonight. But moving on, so all these bad things are going on. Bad people, there's just bad people out there. Really? What, is this like news to us or something that there's bad people out there? These, the orange man is lying. Ah! You know, and, and what? You know, it's, it's almost like, like what? We're going we're gonna to lose a night's sleep over somebody finding out that, that somebody who's in politics is a liar? You gotta be kidding me. You know, this person's a criminal. Listen, you wanna know, you know that yellow tape that's out there, you know, that they put around crime scenes? They ought to get a huge roll of it. I don't know how big. The roll's gotta be just, just ginormous. And they ought to put it around the Capitol building. Because that's what's going on. Crime is everywhere. But let's make sure it's not in our life. So the writer of Hebrews over verse 12 says, wherefore, lift up those hands which hang down and your feeble knees. Oh, COVID's this and COVID's that. And oh, that orange man is so bad. And, and this politic and this, this politician over here. And oh, this company's over here. They're all, <laughs> come on, really? Haven't we moved on beyond all this stuff already? Lift up your hands, which are hanging down, and your feeble knees, and make straight the paths of your feet, lest that which is lame be turned out of the way. We need to deal with the lameness that is in our lives. But rather, let it be healed. And how are things healed in our lives? They're healed by us getting deliverance. They're healed by us falling out of agreement or coming out of agreement 
with Satan and the things that he's telling us and, and aligning ourselves with the word of God to fear not. Listen, we're, we're in fear of things that, 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 that are, it's like a little sliver in our bodies com compared to the things. Because listen, brothers and sisters, they're after you. Okay, they're not just after these people that are dying. They're after you and your children and the things that you love. And the things that God has blessed you with. That's what the devil wants. And more and more, he's picking off more Christians. Just the whole thing of Christianity, the whole, the whole, the whole um, um, scenario, the whole scenic uh, of Christianity, uh, of real Christianity, is changing. Got to deal with that so it doesn't come bite me again. Okay. And uh, so... The writer here, Hebrews, says, lift up those hands that are hanging down, those knees, and, and make straight your paths because we can be healed. Follow peace with everybody and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. So, and it's not talking about salvation. It's talking about an aspect of our salvation. But it's not talking about once saved, always saved, which I believe in. It's not talking about loss of salvation. What it's talking about is that if we don't align ourselves with what the word of God says, listen, we're our own biggest enemies. We're the ones that are we're defeated before we even decide to, to get out of bed. When we wake up with all this fear and we wake up with this is happening, that's, oh, it's just so horrible. It's just so horrible. I wonder how God feels about things. Do, do, we, do we ever ask or think about that? God, how do you feel about this? The, the inhumanity to man, the, the, the things that are going on, the diabolical things that are going on. You know, uh, moving on. Looking diligently. Look at that. Oh, those words are bigger now. Looking diligently. It, to be diligent with God is it's an attribute of God because holiness is not a process. See, with you know, without holiness, no man's going to see the Lord. So we need to look diligently, find this, okay? Because holiness is not a process, but it's the result of sanctification, it's the result of salvation. And so we need to look diligently, lest any of us fail. We we become deficient the greek says we become deficient of what of god's grace a lot of christians are deficient i'm not saying they're empty they're just deficient of god's grace because we are saved by grace through faith and that faith is not of ourselves it's a gift of god listen anybody should boast Do you ever read that verse over in ephesians chapter two we are saved by grace through faith and then we walk around saying, I can lose my salvation. We're trying to please God when we can't please God. The only way we can please God as Christians is to be faithful. We can't go to church enough. We can't go on, you know, be on time enough. We can't tithe enough. You know, we, we can't walk old ladies across the street enough. We can't be kind to animals enough to, to do anything to please God. God sent his son. God left his throne because we couldn't do it to save us and he suffered and, and when jesus got to calvary he was whipped and beaten so bad and they were spitting on him and hitting him with their hands hating him hating him hating their savior when they hung him up the bible says nobody could even recognize who was up there and that's what god did for us and we're just so thin-skinned about so many other things that are going on Looking diligently, lest any man fail. We become deficient in God's grace. Because if we are a root of bitterness, this word springing and the King James mean born. We're, we're, we're going to birth bitterness and it's going to trouble us. And so many are defiled by this. This, this word, this word, it, it it means it causes a disturbance in our lives. And how many of us are disturbed about all these things that I'm so glad, I'm, man, thank God for Jesus Christ. Because every day I have an opportunity that I'm alive, every day that I'm alive, I have an opportunity to not let the bozos out there. You ever see the far side, the, 
the Bozone, you can Google it uh, or whatever search engine you use, Bozone, B-O-Z, uh, uh, Bozone, B-O-Z-O-N-E, Bozone. And uh, it's a funny comic because uh, there's a lot of bozos out there. And then it says, lest there be any fornicator. Well, that's kind of a strange thing to throw in the middle of following peace and holiness and, and you know, dealing with roots of bitterness and, you know, springing up and, and troubling us and, and, you know, the peaceable fruit and concerning him, concerning him that endured such contradiction as sinners against him. Are against themselves and lest there be any fornicator that means well here let's let's read it lest there be any fornicator or profane person being void of christianity okay if you're void of christianity you you are considered a profane person just like esau who for one count it one morsel of meat sold his birthright. I wonder how much we would sell our birthright for if we could. We would have all sold our birthright sooner than Esau would. And, and we do that in Christianity because we have a lack of Christianity in our lives. You see, we think that, that when we get saved, many Christians think that, okay, God, yeah, I got you in my life, and you and I are going to do this, that, and the other thing. And God says, well, I don't want your help. I'm not interested in your thoughts. I don't care where you think you want to go. I want you to follow me. Well, but I don't want to go down that road because, see, once you get around that corner, I don't know what's there, and I'm not going down that road. I'm going to go down the road. I can see what's going over here. The Holy Spirit says, yeah, but that's not where I want to take you. I want to take you around that corner because I'm going to teach you. I'm going to guide you. I'm going to provide for you. I want to show you something of how I'm going to take care of you. I'm going to show you that that you have a you have a defect in your in your life that I want to deal with, but I can't deal with it if you don't ever see it. So our Heavenly Father, as we learned earlier in chapter 12, he chastens us. <laughs> Lest there be any fornicator, because you know what it means to be a fornicator? It means somebody who prostitutes themselves. They sell themselves off which is what Esau did, which is what a lot of Christians do. We, we allow the fragmentation of our mind, will, and emotions because we want peace at, no, at any cost, okay? So we'll sell our soul so we can have this, that, and the other thing in our life so we can have a better life, not realizing that we already have a better life, that our life is now dead and our new life is hid with Christ and God. So lest there be any fornicator or a profane person uh, who, for one morsel, I mean, we, we, can look, we can look at this and go, what a loser. Esau. You know, for one morsel, we probably would have sold our salvation for half a morsel, truth be told. For you know how that afterward, when Esau realized what was going on, uh, when he would have inherited the blessing, how many of us, me included, have we lost that blessing? It did. It went around us. God was trying to bring it to us through a right relationship with Jesus Christ. And God had to go around us. And we couldn't inherit this blessing. Uh, he was rejected because God can't bless us when we don't believe. God can't bless us when we're in fear of everything going on around us. Goodness gracious already. How long have we been Christians and we're so fearful of everything? For he found no place of repentance, though he sought it carefully with tears. Esau wept and wept because he sold it off. Now, thank God for Jesus Christ, because we get a second chance. We get a fifth chance. We, we get a hundredth chance. Esau didn't. That's the type of Savior we have. That's why we can trust him. That's why we can put our faith in him. That's why, that's why we can, we know when we make these mistakes, our saviors out there not going to smack us, you know, denozo us in the back of our heads and say, what a loser you are. He's going to pick us up and dust us off and say, hey, let's try that again. Wow, you talk about real love. Now, we're going to, I'm going to read through these next several verses because I don't have much time left. So I, let me at least get through this. Uh, so, hey, brethren, pay attention here. This is good stuff. For you, us 
are not come unto that mountain that might, <laughs> might be touched, that burn with fire, nor unto blackness and darkness and the tempest and the sound of a trumpet and the voice of words, which voice they that heard entreated that the word should not be spoken to them anymore. You remember that? You remember when, um, um, where, what, it was in uh, Ex Exodus, what is it, Exodus 19? And uh, um, Moses coming down from the mount, and, and he told the people, you know, just stay where you're at, and, you know, you're going to hear things, and, and the mountain's quaking, and this black darkness is just everywhere. People are freaking out, and God is talking, and the trumpet is going loud and long. It says, verse 19, the sound of the trumpet, and then the voice of words God is talking, which voice they that heard entreated Moses and said, Moses, we're ready to listen to you, but these words of God, would you please ask God to be quiet? Because we're going to die if we hear another word. Wow. Can you imagine? <laughs> Thank God for Jesus Christ and the grace and mercy that meets us, you know, every day, you know, grace, not getting we, what we deserve, mercy, getting what we don't deserve. We get all these blessings and we don't deserve one of them. And, and, and the people couldn't stand. If you go back and read in, in, uh, in 1920, I believe, uh, of Exodus, you find out that the people, they were so freaked out over everything that God was doing. They couldn't even, the beast, nothing could touch the mountain because that's where God was. And God was speaking and the people, they couldn't take anymore. They said, tell God to be quiet because we're going to die if we have, if we listen anymore. For they could not endure that which was commanded. And if so much as a beast touched the mountain, it's going to be stoned or thrust through with a dart. And so terrible was the sight that Moses, Moses, Okay, Moses said, ah, I exceedingly fear and quake. But us, but you and me, we've now come unto Mount Zion. Okay, not, not, uh, uh, Mount, this shouldn't escape me, I'm the preacher. Um, um, well, well, whatever, I'll remember it after we close. But now we're under Mount Zion and unto the city of the living God. We're not just talking about the mountain anymore. Mount Zion is our, heaven, is our, is our heavenly home now, the heavenly Jerusalem, to an innumerable company of angels. We don't have to worry about anything. Father, I need some angels to help me take care of this over here, Father, in Jesus' name. And God may say, okay. And God may say, you know what? I'm going to be doing something else. Is that okay? Oh, no, 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 that's not okay, God. Well, of course it needs to be okay. Let your will be done today, right now, on earth, here in my life, Father, just as it is in heaven. That's what's most important. I got to close here. But we've now come to Mount Zion, under the city of the living God. Now, we're here, and before people couldn't even hear the word of God, they were like, I can't take it. I'm going to die if I hear any more, Moses. We'll listen to you, Moses. Tell God, we'll listen to you. But we can't listen to him because we're going to die. Now we come under the city of the living God, to the heavenly Jerusalem, to an innumerable company of angels, to the general assembly and church, church, the ecclesia of God, of the firstborn, which are written in heaven, and to God, the judge of all, and the spirits of just men made perfect. Here we are made perfect, and we're just filthy, filthy vessels. And to Jesus, we've come to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling, the purification, our salvation. God's made us pure. That speaks better things than that of Abel. Because what did Abel's blood do? Abel's blood on the ground cried out vengeance. The blood of Jesus cries out mercy. So you see, I'm so, so see that you refuse not him that speaks. Okay, and how do we refuse him that speaks? We are fearful of so many things. We complain and bellyache about everything. Hey, I'm a good example of that. Those that know me, you know me. But I'm trying to do better. I'm trying to be better. So 
Jesus, the media, the new covenant. Let's see that we don't refuse him that speaks, which is the Holy Spirit. For if they, speaking of Israel, escaped not, who refused him that spake here on earth, much more shall not we escape if we reject, we turn away from him that speaks from heaven. Now, it's not talking about a loss of salvation. It's talking about, the, and it's not talking about hell. Well, it, it, it figuratively, what it's talking about is that we're going to think we're in hell. How many Christians are just, man, oh, man. I mean, the hell that we all allow in our lives when, when we've got this purification and city that is before us. Whose voice then shook the earth. Back then, when God spoke, remember earthquakes, everything up on that mountain. People were so fearful, whose voice then shook the earth. But now, he is promised, saying, yet once more, I'm, I'm, I'm going to shake not the earth only, but also heaven. And the word, and this word, yet once more, signify the removing of those things that are shaken as the things that are made, that those things which cannot be shaken may remain. In other words, the things that God lays down as help for us, okay? Not fear, okay, but trust, not confusion, but peace. God's not the author of confusion, the devil is, but of peace. Wherefore, we receive a kingdom which cannot be moved. <laughs> the kingdom we're talking to God about, <laughs> we're over here, we're over here. You know, our kingdom's on ha half of it's on sand, the other half on, on quicksand. I mean, who knows, you know, which cannot be moved. So let us have grace whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. Why? Because God is still a consuming fire. See, grace and peace come by Jesus Christ. But our God is still a consuming fire. Let's not forget that. And I got to close for, for this message tonight. But uh, gonna, if the Lord allows, I'm going to have a unique message uh, Sunday morning. Uh, so I hope you can uh, join us, be there uh, for that. So if you don't know this Jesus I've been talking about, make sure you ask him to come into your life and save you from your sins. If you'll do that, he'll do that. He'll come in and he'll save you. But he'll save you from the inside out. Okay, You don't have to be a religious person. Let, let God make you that real true religious person that he wants you to be by asking Jesus Christ to come into your life and save you from your sins. It's the sin issue that, that we need to deal with. But if you're driven, harassed, and tormented, and this is producing a compulsive behavior, which is slowing down, stopping, or turning around your spiritual growth and progress, this is what demons are doing in the life of the believer. But there it is on our wall to the right, if you're facing the pulpit, if, of course, nobody's at Hegwish right now, but spiritually we are, it says, these signs shall follow them that believe in his name. We cast on devils. We believe the gifts are for today. We believe that God heals today because he tells us in his word that he doesn't change. So if you have any need, just ask the Lord. There's self-deliverance. There's people out there. Charlie's praying for people at different times. I'm trying to help them at different times. There's a lot of help that we can get. You can get material from WRW, apply it in your life. And, and if you ever can't afford something, you let me know. And I'll make sure that if you mean business, if you're serious, I'll make sure that you get what you need to move forward with the Lord. I love y'all. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and leave the room open for a few minutes, stop the recording. And uh, we can visit if you'd like. If not, Lord willing, some of you I'll see tomorrow, some of I'll see Saturday, some I'll see Sunday, here, there, or in the air, as they say.